Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are once again going to be taking a look at that big storm that's going to bring impacts such as flooding, severe weather, and possibly some snowfall as well. We're going to break that down in just a moment. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know which day this week do you think will have the worst of the severe weather? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at the storm reports from yesterday. Zero wind reports, zero tornado reports, but 31 hail reports. So you can tell yesterday was just completely dictated by hail storms for South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin as well. Brendan was live for this event over on the second channel, so if you haven't checked out his channel, be sure to do so because he's going live for some of these more minor events. Here's our day one categorical outlook, and this is for today, obviously, from the time I'm making this video, Tuesday, and that's going to be April 6th, uh, and we do have a slight risk again today, and we are going to have one tomorrow as well, so be sure to stay tuned because we're going to be talking about all of these days coming up. We have a general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green, and then a marginal risk there in the darker green, so that's going to be extended from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and a little bit of South Dakota as well there. And that is where we expect a little bit of severe weather to be possible. But it's mostly this yellow area that we're watching for. You're going to want to pay attention to all of these e regions, even the lighter green there. Uh, but this yellow region is especially where we consider this to have the best conditions for severe weather. Kansas up through a little bit of Nebraska is where we expect the worst of the severe weather today on Tuesday, April 6th. Here's our day one wind outlook, and this is going to be our wind probability by percentage. 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green color. The yellow there, that is where we expect a 15% chance for damaging wind to be possible. And I just switched it to the hail outlook, and just like it was yesterday, it is still just identical. So again, 5% in the green, 15% chance there in the yellow. Let's take a look at that tornado probability. Yesterday we had a less than 2% chance. Now we have a 2% chance for today. So for Kansas, Nebraska, we do have a 2% chance of tornadoes within that region throughout the day today. I have yet to talk to Brendan, but I'm sure there's a good chance he'll be going live. So again, you're going to want to check out that channel, Direct Weather 2, that can be found in my description, my pinned comment on my YouTube channel. I'll even leave a thing on the screen. You can check that out today. He might be going live for that. Let's take a look at some of that modeled guidance now. We're going to just break this down. Here is the high temperatures here for today, Tuesday, again, April 6th. And we're going to be generally in the 60s and 70s here for this region, which is going to be sufficient. Lower 60s, which will likely be good enough. Obviously, that could be higher. But for Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Oklahoma, Arkansas, we're all going to be in the lower 60s there. Our CAPE is generally going to be at about 1,000 to 1,500 throughout all of these marginal and slight risk regions, which will also be sufficient. Uh, our shear is going to be a little bit on the lower side. This is once we get later into the night. Uh, but this is pretty much when it's at its peak, and this is when the storms really won't be at their peak. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at that simulated radar for our day today on Tuesday, and we're just going to break that down. All right, so here we are taking a look at that simulated radar. This is by approximately 10 a.m. here today. And you can see we will already have some showers and thunderstorms firing up for Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. Those are generally going to dissipate as we approach the night tonight. So this is going to be by about maybe 9 p.m. tonight here on, again, Tuesday, April 6th still. And we do see some more stronger-looking thunderstorms developing here for Kansas. And then by the time we're reaching probably about 3 a.m., we can see a strong line of thunderstorms developing uh, there for portions of Kansas especially. I'm especially watching Kansas here because this model is definitely just thinking Kansas is going to get the worst of the conditions for sure. And remember, I said snowfall is possible with this big storm. And take a look at Colorado, Wyoming, portions of Nebraska and South Dakota. We have some moderate to heavy snowfall coming down. That'll be coming to an end quite shortly. And by the time I reach about maybe, I would say about 12 p.m. here on Wednesday, April 7th, you can see there is minimal amounts of snow left over. And the thunderstorms will have weakened by that point. And that takes us close to day two. We're actually a little bit beyond into day two. So let's just take a look at that day two categorical outlook. And it is still an avocado here, as you can see, uh, with that marginal and the slight risk. It looks just like an avocado to me. Uh, we do have the general thunderstorm risk there for the lighter green regions. Uh, and then the darker green re regions, we have a very large marginal risk there for Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, and a little bit of Arkansas there as well. And then we have that slight risk within 
that, which is going to be for Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, and a little bit of Texas as well. Now, for this day, for Wednesday, I do anticipate that an enhanced risk is certainly possible here. They've left a lot of room for it. That's a very large slight risk, and the conditions just seem worse on Wednesday than they do on some of the other days. So I definitely think an enhanced is possible. Also, a slight, just staying at a big slight here is also possible. Regardless, I do think that Wednesday has one of the higher potentials this week. Uh, so let's just break down those individual outlooks real quick. Wind, we have a, again, 5% ch chance there in the green, a 15% chance there in the yellow. Let's just move on to the hail, and it's a little bit smaller, but as you can see, it's kind of like a baby avocado here. Uh, we have a 5% chance there in the green and a 15% chance there in the yellow, mostly for Arkansas, Louisiana, and a little bit of Texas as well. Now, the interesting thing is as we get towards Wednesday, we do have a more significant chance of tornadoes. We have a 2% chance there within the greens and then a 5% chance there within the brown. And that 5% chance is the most chance of a tornado we've had in quite a while. Uh, I think probably approaching a week or maybe above a week since we've had a 5% chance of tornadoes, likely since that enhanced risk we had for the similar regions here. So, yeah, we're, we're having one of the bigger tornado days potentially tomorrow that we've had in a little bit. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that simulated radar, some of those other impacts as well. We're just going to be taking a look at everything that's going to be going on for this date. We're going to even take a look at Thursday and also Friday, because things have definitely changed uh, over the past 24 hours on how that looks as of right now. So first things first, let's just get into the simulated radar. You can see this is by about 2 p.m. You can see we do have some showers, some thunderstorms in the area. Let's take a look at those high temperatures and look, it's going to be a very strong cold front because it's 50s behind that cold front, but it's upper 60s, maybe even 70s out ahead of it. Uh, so there's going to be a significant cold front coming through these regions. Let's take a look at the cape out in front of it. Uh, and it's not the most impressive, especially to the south. We have maybe approaching 1,500 to 2,000, but some areas aren't even getting over 1,000 there. Uh, for Arkansas and northern Mississippi. So uh, it's going to be all over the place, but the shear here is looking a little bit more intense. We do have those browns, which is going to be a little bit elevated here. So this is the most shear we've had uh, out of all of these severe weather days that we've taken a look at so far. So I think that's why we have the 5% chance of tornadoes is that increased shear with this day in particular. That significant tornado parameter is going to be in our reds, which is going to be from the moderate to the higher end of things for sure. Uh, so I think, again, that's probably why we have that li a little bit more of a chance of tornadoes for sure. Let's just move through with that simulated radar again. And this is going to be approximately by about maybe 6 p.m. there on Wednesday, April 7th. And as you can see, these storms are looking quite intense, especially out in front of that cold front. The cold front is going to have quite a bit of storminess along it, but it looks like there will be some uh, storms out ahead of it. And that could be in the form of supercells trying to develop. It's going to be difficult to say. This becomes a lot more scattered by the time we're reaching approximately 9 p.m. here on Wednesday. Uh, you can see it's just kind of a multicellular type setup. There could be some embedded supercells, but generally uh, I expect a multicellular setup there, it appears, based on that simulated radar there. Then for day three, because we can see Thursday now, and this might be surprising to some of you, but we don't even have a slight risk for Thursday here. Uh, we're in a very large marginal risk. Do I think a slight risk is possible? Yeah, matter of fact, I think it's likely, especially since they have a larger marginal risk here, I think it's likely that by day one there will be a slight risk. But things have changed. Uh, originally, yeah, at, even as of yesterday, the models were trending at some storms coming through in the evening hours during the day. They have completely gone away with that over the past 24 hours. So the models have completely switched on us now, uh, and it's looking like it's going to be mostly a morning threat. Uh, so with it being in the morning, you don't really reach those high temperatures. So what ends up happening is those storms do not reach their peak potential. Uh, if, if they are hit in the evening, they do reach their peak potential. So let's take a look at those temperatures. And this is going to be by about 11 a.m. there on Thursday, April 8th. And you can see we will maybe be in the lower 70s, upper 60s, which isn't as hot as we originally anticipated. And those dew points are definitely going to be spotty. We do have some up mid to upper 60s, even lower 70s in some spots, uh, but it's not very widespread. The Cape is going to be very limited to a very small region uh, there, but we do reach 1,500 to 2,000. And this is why I think we will get a small slight risk for these areas that have the higher dew points of uh, the higher Cape here, convective available potential energy. So it's going to be mostly southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama there, and then maybe the panhandle of Florida is the area I'm eyeballing. But as you can see, by 2 p.m., these storms have almost moved out of the, of the severe weather area, uh, whereas in most bigger severe weather events, they're just beginning at about 2 p.m. So this is starting way too early 
uh, for this to reach its peak potential, like I said. Now, Friday remains a question mark. Friday remains a question mark. The cape is going to be out of control, as you can see, very high, 3,000 to 4,000. Uh, and as you can see on this frame, there will be storms all over the place from Texas all the way eastward through into possibly Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. So across the entire Gulf Coast, I expect thunderstorms to be possible, possibly severe. We're going to have to watch that very, very closely. Anyway, my confidence tab ha has been at a standstill for like three days straight. We're at a four out of six. Uh, I don't know if we will get a slight on Thursday. I think there's a 50-50 chance, uh, maybe above a 50 chance there. Uh, let's see. And then for Friday, I think that it's a big question mark because there is a lot of potential there, but there's also some potential that the timing is just off similar to Thursday. So that's why I'm remaining at a four out of six. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next severe weather event will be? And James Moore said, I think it will be sometime early next week. And that is the time frame I'm eyeballing as well. I think next week we could get some storms as well, similar to what we've had this week. Anyway, for today's patron Highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Garys, and John Qualisi. I would like to thank you all for supporting the channel. If you would like to join our exciting Patreon page, you can do so by clicking the link in the description or in the pinned comment down below and joining today. Anyway, for today's channel members, we have our weather top dog, Hair Farms One, and then also our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. I thank you guys a lot for supporting the channel. If you would like to join our channel membership, that's going to be next to the subscribe button, and there's some exciting con content and features there that you can gain access to. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely wreck the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm out to just suggest this for more people. Be sure to comment down below and subscribe if you want more weather-related content. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video.